do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me love you. Sure is a good looking machine. Boy, look at all these parts. Honey, I think I'm going to need some help here. You're right about that. I wonder what this is. That's a spill tray. Well, no, honey, I don't think so. Spill trays are bulkier and more cumbersome. This thing is light and easy to handle. It can't be a spill tray. It's a spill tray. Is not. Is. Is not. Okay, it's not. You know, honey, you're right. It's the spill tray. You know what, honey? I think you better let me put this machine together. Assembling your Venstar 3000 is so easy that it may be difficult for the male mind to comprehend. Women, beware. <laughs> Actually, anyone can assemble the Venstar 3000. Your first machine will take you about 30 minutes to assemble. After you get the hang of it, you'll be assembling machines in less than 20 minutes. Welcome to Chapter 3. Here's what's covered on this audio CD. What you will need to assemble your machines. Contents of your machine delivery. What to do before beginning assembly. How to assemble the head. How to install the spill tray. How to assemble the back door lock. All about vend settings. How to adjust the vend settings. How to install the head onto the stand. How to reassemble the rest of the head. How to install the back door and lock it. How to assemble the top door locks. How to install the top door and lock it. Coin mech bezel assembly. Tips for handling product and all about ordering product. So, you got your delivery. A big cardboard box with some machines in it. And maybe you're worried that it takes an engineer to put these things together. And worst yet, you don't know any engineers. Not to worry. We have designed the Venstar 3000 to be a snap to assemble. Assembly of your Venstar 3000 happens in 10 easy steps. 1. Assemble the stand and the pedestal. 2. Disassemble the head. 3. Install the spill tray. 4. Assemble the back door lock. 5. Adjust the vent settings. 6. Install the head onto the stand. 7. Reassemble the rest of the head. 8. Install the back door and lock it. 9. Assemble the top door locks. 10. Install the top door and lock it. We're going to review these steps one at a time. Please refer to the pictures and diagrams in Chapter 3 as your guide. What will you need to assemble your machines? One large pliers or a 7 8 inch and 7 16 inch open end wrench or an adjustable open head wrench. One Phillips head screwdriver and one flat head screwdriver. One box cutter or similar tool to open the box. One container of armor awl or plumber's salve. One rubber mallet and one 2 by 4 by 12 inch wood block. Let's talk about what's in the box. Each box contains all the components for two Venstar 3000 machines. For each of two machines, your box should contain the following. One pedestal, that's the circular base. One stand, that's the metal pole that goes into the circular base. One head, this is also known as the canister housing, and it comes prepackaged out of the box. One spill tray. Five nuts and five long bolts that are used to attach the spill tray to the head. These come in their own plastic bag. Three candy canisters. Three plastic coin trays. One back door lock, and this comes disassembled with six pieces and a barrel key, all in its own plastic bag. One back door. This is the door that has one lock hole in the center. 
two top door locks. These come pre-assembled in another plastic bag with two regular keys. One top door. This is the door that has two lock holes, one on each side. Remember, each box comes with two machines, so multiply this list times two. Before beginning assembly, take all the parts of the machine out of the box and put them on a flat surface where you can see them. How to assemble the stand and the pedestal. First, you want to clean both ends of the stand, that's the pole, with denatured alcohol. Now, this is very, very important. Failure to do so will nullify the warranty on this part. So make sure you do that. Next, you're going to lubricate the pole with Armorall, Plumber Salve, or some similar lubricant that is safe for plastics. After you've done that, install the stand into the pedestal base, either by twisting the pole in with your hands or hammering it into the pedestal with a rubber mallet or a 2x4 wood block. Done. How to disassemble the head. Each machine head is comprised of the following. One back door. Three coin trays. One top door, also known as the top lid. Three individual candy canisters, and each of these comes with one proportioner housing, one proportioner that looks like a star, one proportioner wheel, one proportioner wheel cover with screw. One empty housing with three coin mech bezel assemblies. Two locks with regular keys for the top door. One lock with a barrel key for the back door. Three sets of screws and nuts for the spill tray and one spill tray. And again, refer to chapter three in your training manual for pictures of these parts. The head of the machine comes partially assembled in its own plastic. So you are going to disassemble the head completely so that you can see the coin mech bezel assemblies and candy chutes. Lift the head, that's the housing, out of the box and remove the plastic. Now remove the top door and back door from the head. Keep in mind that you must remove both these doors in order to be able to get the candy canisters out of the head. Now remove the candy canisters from the head by leaning each canister forward and pulling the canister up and out as shown in chapter 3. Remove the three coin trays from the back of the head. Take the plastic bags containing all lock parts and keys out of the box. Depending on the size of your order, lock parts and keys may come individually sealed in separate plastic bags or all in one box marked hardware. The same keys will open the locks on all your machines. Take the plastic bags containing the nuts and bolts for the spill tray out of the box. Now take the spill tray out of the box. You now have an empty head and are surrounded by all the parts you are going to use when reassembling the head. Set all the loose parts, trays, canisters and doors to the side for a moment and examine the empty head. Look at the three coin mech bezel assemblies. The coin mechanism is the turning handle with the small square that sits around it. It fits into the bezel. The bezel is the frame with the chute and the chute door on it. The turn handle coin mechanism is fastened to the bezel with three screws in the back. Although the coin mech bezel assemblies come assembled and installed, we just want you to be aware of the parts to each assembly in the event you ever have to replace a coin mech bezel assembly yourself. See the additional information at the end of chapter 3 in your training manual for how to assemble the coin mech bezel assembly. 
So now you're done. How to install the spill tray. Before installing the spill tray, remember to remove the three coin trays from the back of the head. Now, place the empty head of the machine on a flat surface and turn the head upside down so that the round insertion hole for the stand is facing up. You are now looking at the bottom of the machine head. The first thing to notice is that there are five small hex nut holes in the bottom of the head. These nut holes are the exact shape of the five hex nuts you are going to place in them. These holes will guide the hex nuts into place while you screw the screws into them, thereby eliminating the need for you to use a pliers or a wrench at the same time. What I'd like you to do now is to refer to the picture of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. Remember, you are now looking at the bottom of the head. The next thing you're going to do is to place the spill tray onto the bottom of the head so that the bolt holes of the spill tray line up with the bolt holes on the bottom of the head. Now that you have taken the coin trays out, from the back of the head there is enough space for you to put your hand into the head. One at a time, place a hex nut in a hole from the inside of the head, and while holding this hex nut in the hole, screw the bolt through the hole in both the spill tray and the head, turning the bolt into the hex nut with a Phillips head screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver. Again, refer to the picture of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. All you have to do to finish the process is to repeat this until all five bolts have been secured and the spill tray is firmly fastened to the head. Now turn the head over so that it is sitting upright. How to assemble the back door lock. The next step is to assemble the back door lock. This lock comes disassembled in a plastic bag. The parts for the back door lock are one 7 16th inch nut, one lock washer, that's the round washer with teeth-like grooves, one 90 degree turn washer, one 7 8 inch nut, one cam, a lock shaft, and one barrel key. The back door lock fits into a hole in the back door with the key slot facing down. There are flat edges in this hole to guide the placement of the lock into the hole. Insert the face of the lock into the back door with the key slot facing down. Install all your back locks in the same way with the key slot facing down. Line the lock up with the flat edges in the hole. Put the 7 8 inch nut onto the back of the lock and tighten the nut into place using a pliers or open head wrench. Put the 90 degree turn washer onto the lock shaft by sliding it over the grooves on the lock shaft. This 90 degree turn washer stops the turn of the lock at a 90 degree angle. Depending on how you install it, the lock will open clockwise or counterclockwise. Install this washer consistently on all your machines so that you are certain that the lock and unlock positions are always the same for each lock. Installing the washer with the flat edge facing outward opens the lock in the clockwise position that's up to the left. Installing it with the raised edge on the outside opens the lock counterclockwise up to the right. So now continue. Place the cam over the mounting nut and onto the lock shaft facing downward in the locking position. Next, place the lock washer on the lock shaft over the cam. 
tighten the 7 16 inch nut onto the lock shaft to hold everything in place. Put the barrel key into the lock and test it. The barrel key can only be removed when the back door is locked. Another note here. When the barrel key is in the unlocked position, you'll notice that the key can be used as a handle to remove the entire back door. Remember to put the coin trays back in before replacing the back door and locking it. You're done with the assembly for the back door lock. Now I'm going to cover everything you need to know about Vend settings for your Vendstar 3000. The next step is to set your Vend settings before placing the canisters in their positions in the housing. In Chapter 3 of your training manual, you will find a chart of suggested Vend settings for the Vendstar 3000 by product. These VEN settings are the most commonly used by our vendors. Keep in mind that the products listed may vary in size depending on the crop, source, and manufacturing process. We recommend that each purchase from your machine should vend a minimum of 9 pieces and a maximum of 12 pieces of product. This is a good rule of thumb for a fair consumer portion. If you vend a half ounce serving of product, one pound will yield 32 vends. 32 vends at 25 cents each equals $8 in gross sales per pound. Ultimately, you determine the amount of product to be vended. However, we recommend you stick to this formula whenever possible. Please refer to the chart for suggested vend settings in Chapter 3 of your training manual. We recommend that your profit margin per vend remain in the range of 75 to 80 percent. How to adjust the vend settings. Located at the base of each candy canister, you will find a vend setting assembly. This assembly consists of the following parts. A proportioner wheel housing. A proportioner wheel. One proportioner, and this looks like a star, and a proportioner wheel housing cover and screw. Please refer to the pictures in Chapter 3 of your training manual to view these parts. This assembly controls the amount of product that is vended from each canister. To adjust the vend settings, do the following. First, with a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the number 6 Phillips head screw from the bottom of the canister and place the screw in a safe place. By placing your hand inside the empty canister, remove the proportioner cover and proportioner. Then gently loosen the proportioner wheel with your hand and slide it out of the base of the canister. As I'm speaking, you are going to want to refer to the pictures in Chapter 3 of your training manual to see this process. Now, on the top edge of the proportioner wheel, you will notice a set of grooves that look like teeth. If you look inside each groove, you will see that each is numbered consecutively, 1 through 7. Now, look at the proportioner itself. It looks like a star. On one of the three tips of this star, you will see a tab sticking out. When the star is placed on top of the proportioner wheel and centered properly, this tab fits into any one of the seven grooves on the edge of the proportioner wheel. Look at the image of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. Next, look up the appropriate VEN setting for the product you are putting into the canister by referring to the chart illustrated in Chapter 3 of your training manual. What you're going to want to do is to adjust the proportioner wheel to the chosen setting by placing the tab of the star into one of the numbered grooves on the proportioner wheel. You do this 
by sliding the star into place over the correct groove, keeping the star centered with all three tips falling into place inside the edge of the proportioner wheel. You can see an image of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. Now, slide the proportioner wheel with the attached star back into the canister from the inside. The side of the proportioner wheel that has the star on top of it should be facing up. You will notice that the proportioner wheel cover has a square shape on one end with a half circle of empty space in it. This is the front of the proportioner wheel cover. Slide the proportioner wheel cover back into the canister by facing this end of the cover towards the canister lens and tilting it downward. Slide this front end of the cover under the clear lip of the bottom of the canister lens. That's the inside edge of the lens. And then gently press the rear of the proportioner wheel cover downward until it snaps into place underneath the tab. Take a look at the image of this process in Chapter 3 of your training manual. From the bottom of the canister, screw the number 6 Phillips head screw back into place. Now all you have to do is repeat these steps for the remaining two canisters. In Chapter 3 of your training manual, in this section, you will notice a place that says Quick Vend Settings. You can take a look at the instructions for how to quickly set Vend Settings without having to remove the proportioner wheel and housing from the candy canister. Now, very important, proportioner wheel alignment. Before installing each candy canister, you must make sure that the proportioner wheel is properly aligned with the opening of the chute. From the bottom of the canister, you should be able to put your finger all the way up into the hole unobstructed by the proportioner wheel. See the photos in Chapter 3 to take a look at how this works. Now, put the product label for the product you have chosen onto the top face of the canister lens. So now you're done adjusting your vent settings. Next, we're going to show you how to install the head onto the stand. Before you put the canisters and coin trays back in the head, you are going to install the head onto the stand. So, if you turn the head over, you will see a round insertion hole where the stand will fit into the base of the head. Remember, the stand is the pole. Spray this insertion hole with Armorall before installing the head onto the stand. Now, holding the head upright with both hands with the spill tray that you have already installed, push the head down onto the top of the stand until the stand fits snug in the round insertion hole. You're done. Now I want to cover how to reassemble the rest of the head. To reassemble the rest of the head, you are going to put all three candy canisters back into the head and put the coin trays back in the head. With the canister lens facing the front of the head, tilt the canister forward into the head, engaging the rectangular pins on the front of the head. Then, tilt the canister backward into its upright position so that it falls into place. You can look at the image of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. Now you're going to repeat the first step for each of the two remaining canisters. After you've done that, slide the three coin trays into each of the three compartments in the back of the head. You're done. You've reassembled the rest of the head. How to install the back door and lock it. If you have not already done so, place the barrel key into the lock on the back door and turn the key to the unlocked position. 
Looking at the back door, you will notice that one edge of the door is completely flat and the other edge has an indentation all the way across, forming a thinner edge. The flat edge is the bottom of the door and the indented edge is the top of the door. If you're uncertain about this, view the image in Chapter 3 of your training manual. On the inside edge of the top of the back door, you will see tabs. Tilt the top of the door in under the lip of the head and align these tabs with the corresponding slots in the head. With the back door lock in the unlocked position, press the bottom of the back door into place. Lock the back door by turning the barrel key downward. That's all there is to it. Again, you can view the pictures of this process in Chapter 3 of your training manual. Next, we're going to cover how to complete assembly for the top door locks. The top door locks come pre-assembled. You will have to take them apart in order to install them on the top door. Each top door has two locks. Each of these locks is comprised of the following parts. One lock shaft. One large hex nut. One cam. And one small hex nut. And of course, the key to the lock. Top door lock disassembly. Step one. With a pliers or open head wrench, loosen and remove the small hex nut that holds the cam in place. Step two. Remove the cam. Step three. Loosen and remove the large hex nut from the lock shaft. Step four, repeat this process for the second top door lock. Again, if you're uncertain about this, take a look at chapter three to view the images for this section. Now, reassemble the top door locks and install them in the top door. The top door lock can be installed in two positions either with the teeth of both keys facing each other or the opposite. Install your locks consistently in the same direction on every machine. For example, the teeth on all your keys can face out in the lock position. Step 5. From the top of the door, slide the lock shaft into the lock shaft opening. Step 6. From the inside of the door, place the large hex nut onto the lock shaft and tighten it into place so that the lock shaft is tight in the top door. Step 7. Place the cam on the tip of the lock shaft, aligning the square hole in the cam with the square on the lock shaft itself. Step 8. Place the small hex nut onto the tip of the lock shaft over the cam and tighten this nut into place. You have now installed the top door lock in the open position. All you have to do now is repeat steps 5 through 8 for the second lock and then you're done. Again, refer to the images in chapter 3 of your training manual to view this process. How to install the top door and lock it. Easy. If you look at the top door, you will see Venstar 3000 embossed on one side of the door. This area of the door faces front. So, place the top door over the three candy canisters with Venstar 3000 to the bottom right of the top door. Now make sure the top door is firmly in place by looking to see that all of the top edges of the canisters are a snug fit under the top door. Lock the top door in place with the keys provided. That's it. You're done with that part. Again, you can view the images of this in Chapter 3 of your training manual. 
Now we're going to address CoinMech Bezel Assembly. The CoinMech Bezel Assembly comes pre-installed in the head of your machine. There are three assemblies per machine, one for each selection. There will be situations when you go to cache your machines where you will need to change the chute door on the CoinMech Bezel Assembly or replace the assembly altogether. The spring on the chute door sometimes breaks due to general wear and tear through use. At other times, candy or pieces of nuts may get stuck in the chute itself or in the turn handle mechanism. You can remove these items and clean the chute at the location. Or you can replace the entire coin mech bezel assembly and then clean the one you took off at home. Either way, you need to know how to replace a chute door and install a coin mech bezel assembly. The disassembled parts to a coin mech bezel assembly are 5 Phillips head screws, the turn handle mechanism, the chute door, the chute door spring, and the chute housing that the turn handle mechanism fits into and this includes the chute itself. You can look at a picture of these parts in Chapter 3 of your training manual. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver when assembling this unit. I strongly suggest that as I take you through this, you view the pictures for this section in Chapter 3 of your training manual. So here we go. Pick up the chute door. You will notice that the top of the chute door has two protruding rods on either end of it. One of these is longer than the other. You are going to place the chute door spring on the longer of these two rods. Pick up the chute door spring. Notice that the spring has little protruding arms on both ends. One of these protruding arms is twisted at a 90 degree angle. Slide the spring onto the rod of the chute door so that the arm of the spring that is twisted at a 90 degree angle is on the outside. View the step one photo in this section of chapter three of your training manual. Now, pick up the turn handle mechanism so that the turn handle and coin slot are facing you in the upright position. Turn the mechanism upside down. In the bottom lip of the mechanism, to the right, you will see a small hole inside the lip. View the step two photo to see what it looks like. Pick up the chute door with the spring in place. Remember the arm of the spring that is bent at a 90 degree angle? While leaving the spring on the rod of the chute door, place that end of the spring into the hole in the bottom of the turn handle mechanism. Look at the step three photo to see exactly how this works. After placing the spring arm in the hole, angle the rod of the chute door into the slot to the right of the hole. Keep the chute door at an angle. You are not ready to line it up completely just yet. Take a look at the step four photo. Now, with the spring arm in the hole, you're going to do one complete twist of the chute door before placing the rods of the chute door into their slots to align the chute door with the turn handle mechanism. The reason you are twisting the door with the spring in place is to preload the spring so that there is enough tension in the spring to make the chute door snap back after candy has been vended. So, with one hand firmly on the turn handle mechanism and the other on the chute door and spring, you're going to hold them together, start to twist the chute door to your left. Look carefully at the step 5, 6, 7, 8, 
and nine photos to see the stages of this twist. Now don't worry. If you don't get it right the first time, you can always go back to the previous step and do it again. Once you have completed the twist, the top front of the chute door should be lined up with the bottom of the turn handle mechanism. Now you're going to slide the chute door rods into place. Angle the chute door so that the rod that the spring is on easily slides into its slot on the right. Take a look at the step 10 photo to see how this looks. Now slide the left rod of the chute door under the protruding tab on the left hand side of the turn handle mechanism and slide it up into its slot. Look at the step 11 and step 12 photos to view this. As shown in the step 13 photo, when you are done, make sure you have the necessary tension on the chute door by gently pushing it forward with your hand. Now, don't let go of it just yet. You are going to install the turn handle mechanism into the chute housing with three Phillips head screws. Look at the step 14 photo. Notice that the turn handle mechanism has a tab on one side. This is the tab you just slid the chute door rod underneath. With one hand, grab the chute housing with the front of the housing and chute facing you. Holding the turn handle mechanism with the other hand, you want to be careful to hold the chute door in place on the mechanism so that the spring doesn't pop off. If it pops off, you can always put it back together following the steps we just did. Now look at the step 15 photo. Place the turn handle mechanism in the chute housing by first inserting the protruding tab over the slot in the chute housing as shown. Push the turn handle mechanism into place as shown in the step 16 and step 17 photos. Place the entire chute housing with the turn handle mechanism in it on a flat surface with the chute door facing down, again, so that the spring doesn't pop off before you get the mechanism screwed into place. Now, from the back of the coin mech, screw the three Phillips head screws into their corresponding holes in the chute mechanism, as shown in the step 18 photo, while holding the turn handle mechanism and chute door in place with one hand. Congratulations! You have just assembled a coin mech bezel assembly. Now, to install the coin mech bezel assembly into the machine head, do the following. Remove the top and back doors of the machine if you have not done so already. Remove the candy canister and coin tray. With the back of the head facing you, Notice that there are two screw holes at the bottom inside of the head, one on each side of the opening. You can view a photo of this in this section of Chapter 3 of your training manual. With the back of the coin mech bezel assembly facing you, notice that there are two protruding tabs on the inside top of the coin mech bezel assembly. Place the top of the assembly into the head, guiding those two tabs under the top lip of the square space where the coin mech assembly goes. Push the bottom of the coin mech bezel assembly into place, lining up the screw holes with the two holes in the head. Now screw two Phillips head screws into place. You have now installed the coin mech bezel assembly in the head of the machine. To remove the coin mech bezel assembly from the head, just follow the above instructions in reverse. Now I'd like to give you some tips for handling product. 
you're ready to fill your machine with product. We can't stress proper product handling enough. Spoilage makes a difference in your bottom line. So, always buy fresh quality products and store your product in a cool, dry place. Avoid long storage periods. Nuts in sealed containers have a longer shelf life. Keep products out of direct sunlight at all times, even if the room or your car is cool. When weather dictates, use foam coolers with ice packs to store and transport product. Remember, chocolate products are especially sensitive to heat and sunlight. Other candies and nuts are also sensitive to sunlight and moisture and should be kept out of direct sunlight in sealed packages as long as possible. In some regions, hot weather conditions may warrant discontinuing certain products from your machines until the weather cools down. This is a decision you'll have to make. Whenever you have to handle candy and nuts, use latex gloves, especially when handling candy at the location. Remember, this is a food product. It needs to be handled accordingly. About ordering product. When you first start your business, you won't know how the location is going to do and whether or not patrons and employees at the location have a special preference for product. So, start by filling each canister with about three pounds of product. Once you determine which products move best, you can adjust your volume per selection accordingly. See Chapter 4 for additional information about how to select product for your machines. You have just completed the audio CD for Chapter 3. In this audio CD, we covered what you will need to assemble your machines, the contents of your machine delivery, what to do before beginning assembly, how to disassemble the head, how to install the spill tray, how to assemble the back door lock, all about vend settings, how to adjust the vend settings, how to install the head onto the stand, how to reassemble the rest of the head, how to install the back door and lock it, how to assemble the top door locks, how to install the top door and lock it, coin mech bezel assembly, tips for handling product, and about ordering product. This ends the audio CD for Chapter 3, How to Assemble Your Machines. Thank you.